Hello everyone, welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. This video is the condensed version of the full length tutorial I have made for my patrons. So if you want to check out the full tutorial, you can support me at Patreon. Patreon is a monthly subscription uh, service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artists that you like. So for today's tutorial, we will be sketching Amsterdam Central train station. This photo was taken by me a few months ago during the Urban Sketches Symposium. And for this sketch, I'll be doing something a bit different. So I'll still be sketching with pen and ink, but I'll be coloring it with Sumi ink and orange. So just a very limited color palette. This scene is not that complicated, but it does have a lot of details, especially for the train station. So the plan for me is to use my pencil to draft out the layout first. And for all the elements in the foreground, which includes the people and the power pole on the right side, I will draw them with pen and ink. But for all the other elements in the background, which um, it's basically the building. I will be painting it with watercolor. I will not be using pen and ink to draw the hard outlines. This is to separate the foreground and the background. So let me just start by drawing the people first because they overlap the building behind. Now this photograph was taken with me standing. So the eye level of all the people in front of me, they are while at my eye level. So when I draw all the people, regardless of their size, regardless of how far they are from me, whether they are close to me or far away from me, their eye level should be around my eye level. So I'm just drawing a few people here. Now drawing people who are moving um, is quite challenging. So the tip here is to draw stationary people first find stationary people to draw first and then include a few people who are walking around that would make your scene more lively okay so notice those people in the background I'm drawing them really small and because they are so small I cannot include uh, details like their facial features and yeah so that's a good thing about drawing small you don't have to draw details but the uh, thing with drawing small is sometimes it can be quite challenging to simplify what you see. But the general tip is this, uh, draw the big shapes first and then fill in the details. If you don't have space, just leave those details out. So let me just add a few more people in the background. And now we can draw this power pole on the right side. And we have an angled line here. Let's draw some uh, power lines. All right, so I just realized that I have some paint left over from the previous painting session. So I'm just going to use some of the new paint with the old paint. So I'm going to start by painting the big shapes first, more specifically all the orange colored elements in the scene and that would probably be most of the wall the front wall the front facing walls of the amsterdam central station um, you may notice that there are some windows on the walls but i have chosen not to draw those windows and i'm just painting basically this big shape this big orange shape first and later on I will paint the windows with Sumi ink um, yeah so for the lighter windows I'll be painting with light Sumi ink I mean diluted Sumi ink and for the darker windows uh, will be painted with concentrated Sumi ink this is so as to make it easier for me to paint if I were to paint this orange wall um, and leave uh, the white space for the windows it's I mean it can be done but it's quite tedious to do that at the top left you see my bottle of sumi ink this is actually Winsor Newton liquid India ink it's made with Chinese ink stick and any ink that's made with Chinese ink stick it's well sumi ink 
And the thing I like about Sumi ink is, well, it has very beautiful textures when it dries. So for this part of the sketch, I basically uh, wetted the sky first and painted it with this light diluted wash of Sumi ink. And I proceed on to paint all the areas that are colored in the scene. Basically, anything that's white in the scene, I will not uh, be painting uh, with gray. So that would include all the t-shirts that are white. And also gray t-shirts, I will not be painting uh, them with gray. I'll just let all the gray t-shirts be white as well. So this is a very quick wash of light zooming in across all the areas that are not white in color. So this is the first wash. Now for the subsequent wash, I need to wait for the sky to dry before I can paint the roofs. Now you may see I have my little bottle container uh, at the right side and there's a cap there. The cap has water and ink, but on the right side, that bottle there, that's for cleaning my brush or to make the wash even lighter. So this wash that I'm painting right now, this is diluted Sumi ink. I mean, it has more Sumi ink compared to the first wash, but it's still diluted. So it's sort of like a mid value, but it's still much darker compared to the sky. You can see how dark it is by comparison. And this particular brush that I'm using, this is a small brush. Uh, a small brush is easier to paint details with. And this is a small sketchbook. I'm actually painting on an A5 size sketchbook. So I need a small brush to help me paint the details. So I look at my sketch from afar to see where are the areas I need uh, them to be darker. And I just overlay those areas with the darker Sumi ink. The last stage of this sketch will be to paint with concentrated ink straight from the bottle to get the really uh, dark blacks. So the bottom of the train station, the roofs, um, all these areas will be painted with the mid value or the mid to darker values. So now you can see the sketch is starting to come alive. Now for the windows, um, same thing. Uh, the strategy is the same as painting the orange wall. So I'm going to paint the big windows and later on use the white gel pen to draw the window frames rather than painting each window uh, by themselves. It's going to be really tedious. And also using this brush, it's so much easier to just uh, paint those windows shapes. The bottom of the train station, it's black. Um, there's actually a signboard there, but I mean, for this particular sketch, I'm just going to paint the bottom black. Let's look around the sketch to see where I should add more blacks. So I want to draw the train tracks too, this time with uh, a darker wash over the initial wash. And now I can draw the window frames. Now some of the window frames are actually black, uh, some are white, but just to make it easier for me, I'm just going to draw all the window frames white in color. And I can use the white gel pen to add little details as well. Now for the train station, there are actually bits of white here and there. So I can use the pen to add little dots of white here and there. The most challenging part about this sketch is simplification. Uh, deciding what to draw and what not to draw and painting the shapes accurately. If you get the shapes accurate, the person who is looking at your sketch will be able to tell instantly what building you are drawing. But if the shapes are not uh, painted correctly, if the shapes are not clear, then it's going to be very challenging to uh, recognize the building, regardless of how much details you add. So this is a close up of the sketch. You can see the black Sumi ink. It complements the orange, which is, by the way, translucent orange from Schminker PO71. 
The Sumi ink complements the colors really well. And we have white as well, which uh, is a good contrast against the color as well as the black. So I decided to use this combination of Sumi ink and color because I wanted to try something different. I didn't know if this is going to work, but um, that's the thing with making art. You just try, experiment, and learn through trial and error. You may not know it works, but if it works, great. If it doesn't work, try something new next time. Alright, so this is the tutorial. I hope this is helpful. And do support me on Patreon if you want to check out more full-length tutorials or support my YouTube channel. My patrons allow me to create all sorts of videos on my channel and they are the reason why you don't see any sponsored ads on my videos. Our patron, by the way, is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to support the artists that you like. I'll put my patron link in the video description below. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial. Bye!